My Mother Sat Me Down, A Future Historical Retrospective My mother sat me down and said, It's time to think about what you want to do. You have learned to read. You have learned to write. You have learned arithmetic. Now is the time to think about what you would love to contribute to the world. I had a few ideas, but my mother continued. In times past, children were told to look for what they wanted to be. They made their choices, mostly, based on what paid the best. They often had to forego what they wanted to do just to get enough money to pay to live. They were mostly slaves. For slaves do not get to choose what they want to do. They can only choose what they want to be in adding energy for wages to live on. And often that choice was very limited based on the conditions they were born into. Many could not afford the education required to learn what was needed in doing what they would love to do. They had to accept less just to make ends meet. They had to find ways to plug their energy in that would give them some slave tokens so that they could eat, have clothes, have shelter. And many could not even afford those things. There was what they called poverty, and there was starvation. Children like you were kept occupied in communal schools, taught to be good workers while their parents were plugging their energy in. The parents couldn't afford to stay home and guide their children, be a family, doing things together. But you live in better times. You can choose what you want to do. Your dad and I can spend all the time we want with you. We can guide you and help you. So be grateful that the people of the planet walked away from the old way and built this new way. I looked at her and asked, You mean... Families weren't together? She nodded. Only a small part of the day, she explained. Most often they got together when the children were done with school. And the moms and the dads were home from plugging their energy in, in the evenings. And then they had worries that kept them from connecting. The children worried about how well they were doing in school. The parents worried about money. The thing that caused the most argument was money. That's something we don't have to worry about now. So our relationships have much less tension. I was perplexed. I asked, why was there money? If money was creating so many problems, why did they use it? My mother smiled. A very good question. When human society was very young and there was no technology, all work had to be done by humans. And there were not enough humans that wanted to do the work that was needed. Some did not want to work at all, wanting to do what they love to do, using their time here to follow their bliss, like we do now. The ones who were doing the work began to demand something in return for their work, something tangible, rather than thanks or appreciation. In order to survive, 
The ones who wanted to do other things had to let go of their dreams and put their energy into creating something to trade. From that point on, the expectation that we add energy into the community was a given. Our energy was being accounted for with the goods and services. When the trade and the barter of products became a problem, when goods and services one offered were not wanted by the ones who had what one needed, representative tokens were used to facilitate the distribution of the goods and services to the ones who needed them. From trade, barter, and work exchange, we went to exchanging shells and beads and other small tokens. At one point, they used a system of notching sticks to indicate the value and splitting them, one piece kept by each party so that the amount could be verified. From there, metals became popular, mostly in the form of coins. When metals became cumbersome to haul around, again, a representation of the energy added transmuted to paper with various amounts noted on them, printed on special paper. Through all this, once direct trade had been replaced, banks sprang up, places to store one's wealth, and well-guarded. The story of the banks with the lending practices and usury, what they call interest, is one you might want to investigate if it interests you. I nodded, thinking I would be quite interested in finding out more, planning to look into it. My mother continued, when carrying large sums of bills was seen to be both cumbersome and dangerous. There were robberies often. The money in the banks was made accessible by what they called a check. One could pay for things by writing the amount of payment on paper and then signing it. One's signature was used to verify that it was you who authorized the transfer of money in your account to the one you paid. But even the handling of checks, by that point in the millions a day or even billions, became costly and cumbersome. And when the accounts began being kept on computers, the money, more and more, became merely electronic bits. Meanwhile, the wealth was more and more being gathered by the psychopaths. The ones who could feel no caring, compassion, love, or empathy for others, who felt no remorse, who lusted after the power that money provided. They were willing to do quite literally anything to get and keep that power, whether ethical or unethical. My eyes widened. They would murder people for money, I asked, aghast. Oh yes, they murdered people. They stole and they defrauded. If they could gain from doing these things, they would do them. It was all quite a mess for humanity. Poverty was rampant. People were turned into wage slaves to move the wealth up to the psychopaths. The psychopaths used their wealth to oppress people spy on people, tell people lies to move them as they wanted the people to move. 
They sold shoddy products so that the people had to buy more when the products failed. They called this planned obsolescence. They told people poisons like sodium fluoride were beneficial and added them to the water and the food. They insisted toxins worked to immunize people from disease and were safe and effective when the truth was they did much damage. But they profited greatly in selling the injections of the toxins, in selling the toxins to cities to add to the water, and otherwise profited. There is much more, and if you're interested, you can research the damage that the psychopaths did to humanity. Again, I thought I would look into the history. It was beginning to fascinate me. My mother then said, All this trouble and misery came out of the accounting for our energy added. So what happened? How did we get out of that mess? I asked her. My mother smiled again, pleased that I was so interested. Well, you know that people were accounting for their energy added. After enough of the people woke up to what was going on, many gave up getting money for things they did to solve for the problems. Because of that, we solved for psychopaths in control. It was a struggle as many spent their energy experimenting and sharing successes in free energy. It was when free energy finally was made available to everyone that accounting for energy became pointless. The psychopaths had free energy for decades, but had hidden it and suppressed it as they knew it would take away their tool to power, their money system. Others spent energy developing robots to do things no one wanted to do, but were necessary to keep human society going. Robots already were taking jobs away from the humans, leaving more and more in poverty, homeless even. So there was a pushback, but... Enough saw that with free energy and the robots, they could solve for the psychopaths in control. However, one more system needed to be solved for. They also needed a way to govern society that did not promote psychopaths. I piped up. I know how they solved for that. They used the web. My mother nodded, yet again smiling at me proudly. Yes, she said, but the web they had was centrally controlled. The psychopaths controlled it. So, yet other people worked to build a web that had no central control. It was truly a net with many nodes. And the data became freely flowing, multiplying like fish in the sea. With a smile, I stated, and that's why we say we are fishermen with our net. You're so smart, my mother said with a laugh. Some built an open source site to report problems on. People started posting problems into the net. Those who had ideas or could help offered what they could, and eventually, people were responding personally in emergencies to help build things to solve problems of all sorts. They began to travel and to congregate with ones they love 
and others who loved to do what they loved to do. And we still do what we love to do, I exclaimed. Yes, and if it wasn't for the brave ones in the past, walking away from the systems the psychopaths used, we would still be their slaves, my mother replied. And it would be much uglier even than when enough of them chose to co-create what we see today. I pondered this. I wondered just how ugly it was and wanted to start researching immediately to find out. My mother caressed my cheek. So, do you have any ideas on what you want to do? Yes, I stated. I want to study history and then teach it just like you. My mother gave me a great big hug. See my playlists for what you can do to help us co-create this better world. Amaterasu Solar, shill for humanity. Love always. Humanity will win.